Hello and welcome to the Siwi Sofa, where we sit down with some of the most interesting participants at the World Water Week to learn more about the array of water-related issues being discussed this week in Stockholm. My name is Eric Paglia, and the name of this session is The Internet of Water. It's convened by Kamira, and it's a discussion I've been looking forward to all week, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Joining me for this is Dr. Sergei Toz, the VP of Strategy and Business Development at Chimera. Welcome, Sergey. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you for having me here. Really nice to, to have you here. And um, first of all, why don't you tell us what you mean by the Internet of Water? What, I what is this concept? Um, right. So the Internet of Water is <coughs> probably one of the important elements towards uh, a wise water world. And I would say it's twofold. On the one hand side, we have um, a super hype out there called Internet of Things. It's kind of undisputable. It's there. And uh, that is dealing all with making machinery and so forth smart. So that would be here um, connected to making the water industry network smart. On the other hand, um, we also have the consumer, um, which um, probably has very little visibility on the water treatment operations, and therefore maybe also lack of understanding on and appreciation of the value of water. Probably water is the most undervalued good on the planet. And here, uh, Internet could also establish a connection between the water treatment operations and the value of water as such with the consumer together. Now, what do you mean by that, the most undervalued uh, product in the world? Well, uh, water is typically treated as a, as a commodity and people have, uh, see water as uh, having the right towards water. And if you would ask a person about, uh, a random person on the street on what would be uh, the value of per cubic meter of water, for example, the price, the cost, uh, most likely he would not be able to tell you the cost. So because it's kind of natural, an, a natural thing, it's just coming from the tap. And then it's disappearing again somewhere in the sink and nobody knows uh, what's happening in between. And, uh, but if you would ask this person about how much a liter of gasoline costs or how much a, I don't know, a smartphone costs, they probably would uh, immediately know an answer, uh, at least approximately. So meaning there is um, um, the value of water as such, how important it is for the society, is not necessarily appreciated by the society. And that's probably also a lack of uh, visibility on, on the water um, treatment process, on the water availability as such. Okay, and how will, how will creating an internet of water help bring out the true value of water, make us appreciate water more? <laughs> Well, I think one of the, um, and we maybe we go with some examples here, but w one of the uh, important things here is to, again, empower the people, increase transparency and empower the people. And um, if we would look, for example, at even developed countries, and let's look at the region, for example, California or so, where we have a uh, drought for many years now and water scarcity, and uh, government is uh, issuing even some sort of fines to the population if they do not uh, meet water targets, um, water saving targets or so. And that is typically happening once a month or so when they read the water meters. But during the time, people not necessarily know how they impact the water treatment, uh, the, the water usage as such, right? The water consumption, the water footprint. Now, let's um, think for a moment if, I mean, all, all people have by now, as some sort of smartphone with them, right? And typically, it tells the people how much they move, how they eat, if they sleep well, and kind of always real time educate you and tell you if you need to do something more or something less. So the same principle could be used for um, making people to help to understand their water footprint. Direct water footprint is an easy one, how much you consume uh, during the day in your household, for example more difficult it, go it becomes when, when you think about, uh, uh, about the consumer goods, about uh, the um, indirect water footprint, what people are buying. What is the choice now uh, going for a beef or for a chicken, for example? The water footprint certainly is a different one. And if you think it even a little bit further, then um, uh, water reuse is a big topic and probably a very important topic um, uh, since, since making water once fresh and available is, is very costly and then wasting it is very uh, not wise. So making the water again available is important. So you could also make visible to the consumer um, if a product that he's going to buy is 
built based or has been grown on reused water or on fresh water that has been depleting then the natural water resources. And by this you actually empower the consumer to make the choices. And by having the consumer making the choices, the industry is of course following the most advantageous uh, choices uh, and offerings for the consumer. Then. So this uh, Internet of Water would be a way to optimize the use of water, but also it would have effects in the energy sector as well, right? Um, right. Well, uh, um, the water treatment process as such is very energy intensive. So um, energy is used for, for mainly pumping, actually, on both producing raw water, pumping it through membranes and desalination is an energy con consumption or by of treating the wastewater for all the aeration and so forth. It's again pumping. And um, now if we would imagine that all the energy consuming devices along this um, complex water treatment process uh, would communicate with each other and would uh, adjust uh, the energy consumption, or let's say its activity, based on the needs the water quality right now needs in the process, right? By this, there would be a reduction of just um, over pumping, for example, over aeration and this kind of things. We don't need to go into details, but with this you would be able to save a lot of energy. And there are many installations already in, in, in place uh, by, um, by the industry that is focusing now on this. Uh, and, and you can save up to 50% of the energy of the water treatment process. What you're describing here is the water industry treatment network. Right. Right. So b basically, um, I mean, like I said, the water industry treatment network, it's raw water, consumer, and then the wastewater treatment, so to say. It's, it, it's a loop, so to say. And, um, and, well, making this process smarter helps you to, again, adjust all the operations to the exact needs to ensure always constant quality. So you don't have um, overdoing something and underdoing something and then sacrificing on quality. So you always meet the right quality and the right quantity of the water you need uh, to serve the people, to serve the industry. So I at the level of the, is it the municipal water authorities where smart uh, internet based water technology would be implemented then? Well, um, basically, if you look at, at industrial versus municipal, then um, I would say that the industrial uh, water already is far advanced. Uh, they already have all sorts of smart measurements in place. Uh, water is, an, is a cost parameter in the industrial operations. So here we see that this has established over the last couple of decades. If we look at the municipal water site, then this is typically still a couple decades uh, behind. So here is a lot of room for improvement. And that is of course driven then by the municipality, but also by the, um, by the service providing industry that helps the municipalities to choose the best solutions. And could this be implemented in principle anywhere in the world or is this more, uh, more geared towards developed economies or where, where do you see this uh, uh, emerging first? Yeah, well, uh, it's, it's an interesting question because, because the answer to this can be any answer, right? Um, the, the basic answer would be it's, it's relevant for everywhere in the world. Um, if we look at the industrial world, then we have many examples where it works already in terms of, again, making the industrial water processes, for example, much, much more efficient, all KPIs based, always knowing what's going on in the water process, right? and by the saving on resources. Uh, municipal a little bit less. If we look, for example, at, um, at, at regions uh, which are more developing right now, uh, for example, in Africa, we have uh, many examples where, um, I mean, all people have a smartphone, but not all people have access to water. Getting to fresh water pro sometimes is a, a, a walk of a half a day to get to the source and then get the water and walk back. So that's already a huge effort, right? And so there are examples that are creating smart sm some sort of smart uh, communication apps uh, that are telling you if it's worthwhile now to start your marsh towards this water well because the water has the right quality or not. Because sometimes it happens you walk half a day to the, to the source and then there's either no water or the quality is not, not the right one. And you need to wait in a, cu a couple hours. So these are kind of very frugal um, 
innovations uh, that are also connected to internet of water, but in a different way. And there it is creating a lot of value, but a different value, I mean, in a different way than in the, in the developed world. So the internet of water would include both hardware and software applications? Well, absolutely. And, uh, well, basically, it's all there. The technology is all there. It's just about connecting the dots, right? And it's just about um, making it happen, making it in, uh, making the installations and, 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 and uh, start the operations in the most smart possible way. Of course, it, it's not happening overnight. So what, what we see is that, again, in the industry, to majority of the extent, it already happened. In the municipal sector, it's, it's kind of a process that is ongoing right now and will take probably another 10 to 15 years or so. And then if we look at the, um, connecting the consumer to the water process, again, um, uh, because we have something like 7 billion people out there, but at this conference just a couple of people are dealing with the topic water as such, right? Uh, and the, the, the trick here is probably for the future is to engage all people and make them aware. And with all the, again, digital technologies that we have, all the communication on a smartphone and all the apps that we have today, uh, I think it's very possible that you can reach awareness about the value of water, about how I'm personally contributing to my water society, so to say, and uh, it can be much easier achieved, much faster. So you use the, uh, the metaphor of connecting the dots. Uh, the technology is there. There's already some progress in this direction towards an internet of water. How do we further connect the dots? What sort of interventions are necessary? Is it people uh, changing their, their value systems? Is it government regulation? Uh, what, what, is, what is needed to move further along yeah. towards the internet of water? Well, probably, probably a little bit of all of it, right? Uh, we see for this, uh, industrial net uh, water network, um, the, the tools that we bring to this um, network are helping to create value at the customer side directly. So at the municipality, for example, wastewater treatment plant. And it's helping to create value for the entire value chain here. So that is something that is happening more or less on its own. Also, we must say that, that there is water treatment in place to meet cer certain effluent uh, regulations and contamination regulations and so forth standards, uh, that is already regulatory driven. So now it's just a matter of fact of making it even more efficient, right? Um, so that is more or less a, a kind of market driven approach because the regulations are behind. If we look at uh, helping um, uh, societies around the world that are suffering from water scarcity to save or to help the population to contribute and save on water, then it probably also requires some sort of uh, consumer empowerment again and some sort of uh, regulatory stimulus to, to make them follow these this procedures in a more easy way. Not just by punishing them with a penalty if they have overused the water, but helping them to make, uh, uh, to make it visible how they actually contribute and how much they use and by this uh, then uh, stimulating them to, to meet the targets of the, of the government, of the local government, for example. Can you speak a little bit more about the, the consumer perspective? I mean, the, these apps that, that people can be looking at to, to help, help them change their, their view on water and the, the information they'd be getting and how that would affect their behavior. Uh, can you paint us that picture, perhaps, in a little more, uh, a little more detail? Uh, well, I mean, it... I mean, I think there are a couple of apps already out there, uh, but it must be very intuitive and it must be very easy going. Like, uh, so like, like we all have some sort of health app or so on, on our iPhone, right? It tells us again, automatically, if we walk enough, if we move enough and so forth. So it must be uh, something like this. So it must be easy and intuitively um, being used. So, and um, again, the so far, in most parts of the world, or let's say in most parts of the developed world, uh, the necessity of, uh, of, of, of tracing his own behavior in terms of water is not necessarily there. We have some regions like, again, uh, west coast of, of e US is one example where it's obvious, so it's there. And, and people are feeling it, so here probably if the government would, again, 
um, uh, support more this kind of, uh, of, of measurement tools that uh, enable people to uh, influence their own behavior would help probably. Right, so that is uh, uh, how it could work. There will be some parallels to our, these apps that we use every day, counting how many steps we take or our heart rate, looking at our virtual water consumption right. and making more informed decisions on, right. on what kind of uh, actions to take. Yes, and plus probably getting information from the water treatment operations uh, to the people, making them um, or helping them to make visible what are the critical KPIs right now ongoing in this uh, water um, treatment um, district, for example. So what is it? How is the water quality right now? And uh, how is the level right now? And this kind of things. And how, gr how great job you did that you have been doing uh, this and this. So this kind of things, right? And could you tell us uh, what uh, Chimera is doing to, uh, to further and advance this uh, internet of water? Right. So, um <coughs> well, we in Chimera are 100% dedicated to water and water intensive industries. And um, we, uh, we serve with, with our products and our offerings um, um, something like half, half a billion people every day. So half a billion people are somehow touched by the quality of our product every day. So that's already quite something. And we are the leading chemistry provider here to all water treatment operations. And uh, so one of our main strategic um, innovation agendas is uh, to introduce intelligence, so, so to say smartness, to all our customers' water treatment operations that using our products. And this is how we work. So we work um, very much on the raw and wastewater treatment side and making um, the energy efficiency, the water savings uh, possible in a w water treatment work. So that is our main kind of focus. Would you be a node of sorts within a, a world uh, that's characterized by the Internet of Water? I guess it would have to also be app developers and, and many others right. that would so participate in this. Yeah, so, so we, uh, what we have been starting also last year, starting to reach out uh, actively to the, um, to the hacker community, so to say. Right, so, th so, so to those people that are there developing all sorts of software, games and everything. And we created the challenge about Internet of Water, uh, and it was at the Slush event in, in Helsinki uh, last year. And here uh, we have been looking for uh, creative contributions from uh, hackers around the world how to, how to improve exactly this challenge of, of water. And uh, the challenge was open, it was open to improving the process or improving also the communication between water or water industry and the people, the broad population. R and we uh, had a winner actually, which was uh, which is called now Distance, which is a company that is enabling, uh, in a very simple way, retrofitting existing old infrastructure uh, to uh, and enable it to communicate with each other. So all devices within an uh, existing water treatment work can start to communicate with each other, and by this optimizing the water treatment process. Again, reducing energy, reducing water usage or water wastage, uh, improving the quality of the water treatment, and ensuring stability of the water treatment. So, so those are important elements. And that was just the first step that we started last year, and this is something that we now continue uh, step by step and, and, and going forward. So old infrastructures can actually be retrofitted uh, towards an Internet of Water paradigm. Right, and, and that is the beauty about this. So you help also um, um, municipalities and societies around the world to actually save on, on big infrastructure costs, which typically is, is, is a big bill. So it's much, much easier if you can do something smart with your existing uh, infrastructure. So making a water treatment work smarter, it's not just helping it to save again energy, save on water, it also increases the inc existing capacity. Because you, for example, because you optimize everything, all the pumps and all the dosing and everything, um, less water is required uh, in the process, so you can treat more water. You have a higher throughput, so to say. So what are your main priorities over the next couple of years at Chimera? So make all water treatment processes at our customers smart and digital and connect all the dots. 
Yeah, connecting the dots. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sergei Toz. Uh, for thank you very much. Here on the Stevie Sofa. And thanks for tuning in to the Stevie Sofa. Stay tuned for more episodes throughout the World Water Week.